Hey, what's up guys? Real quick before we start the video, I had to re-record another portion of this due to focus issues. You'll see that later in the video. But look, I just wanna say this is a really long video. I'm hesitant to even put it out, but as promised, it contains all the individual components required to develop film, and that just takes time to discuss that topic. So yeah, I am on the fence about such a long video, but all the content's really valuable to a, a new film shooter or a new person to developing, right? So let's just leave it in for your convenience. I'm gonna timestamp all the key milestones throughout the video or the, the key functions of the development process, you know, like spooling film, you know, mixing the chemicals, actually developing the film. So I'll break all that down below. All right, guys, let's kick off the video. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Mac Shoots Film. All right, so this episode is going to be a little more technical, not as fun, I'm not out in the field shooting, but it's absolutely important, and it's good to get it out of the way, have it in the repository. Whenever anyone asks, hey Mac, how do you develop your color film? I can just refer you right to this video. So I have a few goals with this video. One, first of all, is that I wanna demystify developing color film at home. For some reason, in the film community, everyone is pushing developing black and white film first. I think that's wrong. Black and white film is hard AF to develop. First of all, there's 11 billion chemicals that you can select from. It's like, how do you know which one's the right one? Um, and how long is it all gonna take? Meaning some is five minutes, some is 20 minutes. Um, it all depends, different temperatures. It's just, a lot of chemicals, a lot of times, a lot of temperatures. It's, uh, it's like voodoo. I, I don't know. I just don't understand it. But guess what? With color film, it's really just two options. You know, powder or liquid, but it's C41 chemicals. Uh, there's different manufacturers, obviously, but it's ultimately C41. All right, so I want to demystify that. Color film is probably the one you should choose first. It's the easiest and fastest. Number two, I really want to list out everything you need to develop. I, whenever I watched these videos before, it was always like, this guy left something out, there wasn't a definitive list, he just plowed through it, he assumed that I knew what he was talking about, so I'll slow it down and we'll talk about everything you need. Also, conveniently for you, everything's listed below in the description, everything that you'll need. Um, and I'll put optional by some things that are optional, but everything in that list is everything that I use. It may not be the specific manufacturer, but they are the tools that I, that I use. All right, so we'll go through all the equipment as well. We'll actually mix chemicals, and then I'll show you how to spool uh, film onto the rolls into the canister, and then we'll develop some film, and while we're developing it, we'll talk about things that I do. So. Also, I wanna jump out there and kind of in front of the troll train because I, I'm certain that I'm gonna do something that someone else doesn't do and they're gonna jump in and be like, oh, you're an idiot, you're telling them to do the wrong thing. So I want this to be a learning experience for everyone and these are my experiences in developing film. If you'll go to my Instagram page, which all of you should be following me, Mac Shoots Film on Instagram, you'll see my photos are pretty decent and odds are I developed that. So my experiences led to those images that you see in my feed. So it's not total crap. I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm saying my methods do deliver an image. Your experiences may take you on a slightly different flow. All right, let's get right into it. Let's develop some film. Okay, so the first decision you're going to have to make is, do you want powder chemicals or do you want liquid chemicals? Powder chemicals are much easier to ship. Liquid chemicals are a hazmat item, meaning that they require a special type of shipping. I don't believe they can go in airplanes. And as a hazardous material item, there is a hazmat fee typically associated with shipping this, right? So it can only be shipped ground, slower, additional fees, maybe slightly more expensive. Chemi uh, powdered chemicals, which are just dehydrated versions typically of the liquid form, they are not considered haz haz hazardous materials. They do not require a hazmat fee. They can be shipped through the air, so cheaper, and you can typically get these faster. So 
what are the pros and cons? Which one should you choose? Okay, my personal experience, I prefer liquid. It mixes so much easier and more thoroughly. I have had powder not fully dissolve and leave spots on my negatives. I know there's multiple reasons that can occur, but why not remove as many variables to failure as possible, right? Powder's cheaper, but maybe five bucks cheaper. Save yourself time, effort, and headaches, and just go with uh, liquid chemicals. I personally use Cinesteel. Not like that helps, but I really dig their chemicals. I, I like the whole build out that they've had recently around the home development um, community and their liquid chemicals, and they've just made powder version of this. They have the TCS 1000, which maintains temperature for your film development and all of the different tools associated with film development. So Cinestill, I love giving them my hard earned dollars because I want to reward their hard work uh, and advance in the film community. So first decision, do you want powder or do you want uh, liquid? Liquid, like I said, Cinestill, this powder, which works fine if you get it dissolved fully. I'm just not a fan. Uh, this is on Film Photography Project. You can just go to FPP, uh, Film Photography Podcast.com and pick up this stuff. They have a ton of awesome stuff on that website. They're really good to have. I don't know if you can see this, but there you go. Okay, and this is all listed below as well. So you'll have links for this stuff. All right, so now I'm going to bring some uh, containers over here and we're gonna talk about mixing chemicals. Let's do that. Okay, so we've got our liquid kit out. This is the Cinestill C41. Now, first thing you're gonna notice when you open up the kit is there are multiple bottles in here, right? So, there are basically three complete steps. You're gonna to wanna to mix your developer, you're gonna to want to mix your Blix, and then your stabilizer. What's really cool with Cinestill and most of these developers, they color code everything, right? So the developer we're gonna mix, we have three bottles, part A, part B, part C, and we'll mix them in a certain order with water at a certain temperature. Now, the good thing is each one of these packets include all the instructions that you'll need. And just follow it step by step. When you're looking at the Cinestill directions, Make sure you follow whatever size uh, bottle of chemicals that you're going to be developing. This is a quart kit, so I'm gonna be uh, adhering to the quart directions. And basically what it says I need is 20 ounces of water, eight ounces of developer A, two ounces of developer B, and two ounces of developer C. The good thing about each one of those quantities that it's asking for, it actually is gonna be the entire contents of the bottle. So I don't have to measure more or less. Basically, I'm just gonna put my 20 ounces of water, part A, part B, part C. Let's talk briefly about water. I believe in using the best water possible. Go get distilled water. Go get the best bottled water you can get. City water is not gonna cut it. Um, why not take the time to do it right? Some people are like, oh yeah, my tap water's fine. I've never had issues. You don't have issues until you have issues. And you don't know what the heavy minerals or chemicals, uh, th their impact is on your film development process. So eliminate as many negative variables as possible. Just get straight up clean water. So for all of my stuff, I'm using the cleanest water possible. For my chemicals, absolutely for my rinsing. So let's get right to it. We are gonna follow these instructions step by step. All right, it says I need um, 20 ounces of water. I've kind of preheated some water. You're gonna have to get it up to 120 degrees. So they're saying 20 ounces. The cool thing about a Cinesteel pitcher, you're not gonna probably be able to see it on this, but um, they have little markings on here that say, hey, there's your water, and then all of the other chemicals that go in it. So really rad. So I'm gonna go fill right up to the line for a developer. It has a Blix line and a developer line, and I'm going right up to 20. I went a little over. I want to get it right what it says. Okay, 20 ounces of water. Now that's gonna to need to be heated, but let's 
do that now. So you would want to make sure this water is at 120 degrees or heat it to 120 degrees. Thankfully for me, I have something. What I have here is the Cinesteel TCS 1000. This is the way that I control my temperature for all of my chemicals, right? I can bring up an entire bath of chemicals to 102 degrees and walk away, let that get to 102, come back and it's ready to go. I'm gonna use this for mixing because it does have you know, jets in here that pull the chemicals through past a heating element, bringing them up to the desired temperature. You just dial that in here. So let's do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. When you set this up, make sure it does not touch the bottom of the canister. Uh, you can just let it float. There's a nice clamp on the back. Go ahead and plug it in. All right, so I'm gonna set the temperature to 120 degrees. That's what the guide calls for. And then, bam. The water is only at 89 degrees right now, but since it's such a small amount of water, it will rapidly approach 120. Now while it's mixing, you can hear it mixing, I'm gonna pour in the other ingredients in the order that they specify in the, in the instructions. So next, developer A, which is eight ounces. A, and this container should be eight ounces. Yep, net contents, eight ounces. So it can mix. All right, so I'm pouring it in slowly. You can see that it's already um, coming up to temperature pretty fast. We're at 100 degrees. And you'll notice that when you see me doing this, you'll be like, this guy's all over the place, totally random. Um, he's messy. That's the thing, you don't have to be perfect with this. I think people are so scared that they're gonna be a millionth of a degree off or something that they're gonna mess it up. Guys, I've done some really dumb stuff in development and guess what? Pretty much comes out every single time. I can't remember a time that it did not come out. Um, it's hard to mess it up. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't, don't be so scared. All right, part B. And the instructions say two ounces of developer B. So that's what we're gonna do. Pour it in nice and slow. Perfect. Now some people will say that I should have brought the developer, the water up to 120 before I mixed in the chemicals. Probably right. But like I said, you don't have to be exactly perfect right? The ratios should be as perfect as possible and your temperature as close as possible, but we'll be at 120 before I'm done mixing this and I'll, I'll let it sit and just really become a solution. And that's all we're doing. Slowly pouring in this last part. Okay. And just keep an eye on what, what you're mixing because you don't want to mix red and blue together. So I've got all three of my red bottles. I know that I'm done with uh, the developer portion of mixing. I'm just gonna let it mix at 120 for a little while to truly become a solution. Let's let that mix and then let's do the blicks. Okay, so the chemicals have mixed long enough. Real quick before we make the blicks, I just wanna talk about a couple of things, specifically storage and using the TCS 1000. So if you're using the TCS 1000 to mix your developer, you're gonna use it to mix your blicks. Before you use it to mix your blicks, rinse off as much developer as you can so you don't contaminate the fresh blicks with fresh developer. So what I'm gonna do first is shut this guy down. Okay, pull this out, drain off as much developer as I can. That's the good stuff. Come over here, rinse it off. Now that that's properly washed off, what we need to do is store the developer. Below in the description, I've listed containers. I really like these collapsible um, chemical bottles because air getting in dilutes and kills the effectiveness over time of developer. So what you want to do is, you know, have a bottle that you can push down, push the air out, and you'll push it down right until you get to the top of the liquid and then put the top on. So let's do that. Let's pour our developer in here. And this developer is nice and warm. It's still 120 degrees. 
To develop with this, you only need it to be 102 degrees. So what I'm hoping is by the time I'm done uh, mixing everything, that we'll be down to 102 degrees and I can get right to developing. Don't forget to rinse out your mixing cup, right? As developer in there, Blix is going in there next. So now what I'm gonna do is push this down to the level of the developer, put my top on. Remember, you may have multiple bottles of the exact same look, so you want to designate what is in there clearly. Here I have a D for developer. You may want to be more explicit, explicit in claiming what's in there, like with a white marker, write it, because it's easy to mix it up. That's the one thing that I have done early on in development is mixing chemicals, right? So developer, done. Put this off to the side. Let's talk about Blix now. All right, back to our freshly rinsed container, rinse the thing out. Bam, right there. It's calling for 18 ounces of water, or I can pour to the Blix line, right to the Blix line that's already marked on the Simistil container. I'm gonna put this guy in here. Now, developer and Blix have different temperatures. Developer's at 120, Blix is at 125. You hear it beeping over here? It's because the fluid levels are too low. So let's get right to mixing in some stuff. Once again, we go in numeric order. We have all the blue bottles, part A, B, and C, and now we're gonna mix them in that order. All right, let's get, let's get A in there so this thing stops beeping at us. Next one's gonna be part B. Let's throw this in here. Very slowly mix this in. All right, mix in and in, good to go. Let's get our last chemical in there. Part C. This is gonna cause the thermogenic reaction, I believe. So you wanna pour it nice and slow. If you just slam it in there, it's gonna fizz up and go crazy especially with the powder. The powder, for some reason, the reaction's so violent. So be very careful, don't just dump it in there. Slow, take it easy, you're not in a rush. Okay? All the chemicals are in there with the 18 ounces of water. Now what I'm gonna let it do is get to 125 and mix at 125 for some time to become a solution. Those four, four parts become one part, something new. All right, let's let that take place. BRB. All right, so for stabilizer, really easy. Just one little bottle. Let's see what they say I need. For stabilizer, they're saying that I need 30 ounces of water and two ounces of stabilizer. This bottle, net contents, two ounces. So now all I need is 30 ounces of water. Have that right here. Let's get after it, pour this guy. There we go, perfectly 30 ounces. Let's get this guy out. Mixer in. Then I just pour it right in and then I'll shake it. So here we go. All right. Stabilizer, done. So now we've got it all done. Developer, Blix, stabilizer. They're in proper storage containers. Okay, so we've got this done. Their the temperature on both of those is falling. That's what we want. We want to get it down to 102 degrees so we can develop some film. So now let's talk about putting uh, exposed negatives on a reel in a light proof container so we can pour some chemicals on top of them and make some Im images. I did a model shoot yesterday, so let's develop the images from that shoot. All right, guys, let's get after it. All right guys, real quick before we develop that film, I wanna show you something. I like to have my chemicals uh, coming up or down to temperature while I'm doing other stuff. Now, if you have a big enough jug, of course you can put the, the TCS right into that canister um, and heat up the chemicals directly. But you can do this. So let's do, first of all, turn her on. Okay, and I want it to 102 degrees because that's the development temperature for this particular C41. Say, so, yep, go. Now I'll go grab my chemicals. Developer and Blix, 
I always put them on the, on the same side every single time so there's no mix up. My developer's always on the left because that's what I'm using first my, and my Blix is on the right. Put it right in the water. The TCS has a little holder, which is awesome. So I've got both bottles secured into the holder. Temperature set to 102. This water is 90 degrees. Remember my chemicals were hotter. So by the time I get all of this done over here, my chemicals and this bath should be the right temperature. Two other really quick notes. One, I always like to have a um, bottle of water that's heating up to the temperature of the chemicals. Because between developer and Blix, I like to pour in water that's 102 degrees to rinse off that developer, and then I pour, my, and I pour out that water, and then I put my Blix on top of it. That way, there's less developer getting into my Blix, and my Blix lasts longer. But I'll show you during the process. The real key here is what I wanted to show you was get your chemicals up to temperature while you're doing other stuff. Then when you come back and you're ready to develop, your chems are ready to go. Put your other rinse bottle in here as well, all right? So now let's go over here to the bar and go ahead and get this film spooled up and ready to develop. Let's do it. Hey guys. So, yep, as you may notice, I am wearing a different shirt. When I was editing the video, I noticed that this portion of, of the video was out of focus. So instead of, you know, allowing an out of focus video to go through, I'm just gonna reshoot it. No, I couldn't find the same shirt, but we're all adults, we'll make it through. All right, so let's talk about getting your film out of the canister, onto a roll, into a tank that you can start processing chemicals. All right, so you need to have your canister of film, a changing bag. So this is a dark bag that you put your arms in and you'll put everything in. So what I'm gonna show you about spooling this film, you're gonna to have to do this arms inside the bag and you're not gonna be able to see visually what you're doing. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to practice this once or twice outside of a bag with a old beater roll of film that you don't mind sacrificing to the practice gods. So you will need your dark bag, your film, a Patterson or some type of light proof tank, right? So it comes with the lid, this guy here, which is, uh, allows you to pour into it and it locks it down. This is a two spool tank, one, two spools. And you'll need to put all of this inside of the bag, all inside here, zip it up, Velcro it up, put your arms in. But let's take a look at how they do all this. It's kind of a pain in the butt, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, and a pair of scissors. Everything's down below, everything's down below. When you are inside of the bag, you have to open these canisters. There is a link down below for something to pop them open. I use my hands, I'll show you that. And then you'll need the reels. And you'll need to familiarize yourself with these reels. These are Patterson plastic reels. And let me get up close and show you this. So when you feed the film in, you are gonna feed it right into here. You see these little tabs? So you'll feed the film in, and then these little guys right back here catch it. Let's see if it'll focus that close. See these little bearings? They're what pretty much grabs that strip. So those little bearings are what grab the strip, and you just rotate your hands forward like that. Let's do it. All right, so remember, anytime film is exposed to any type of light, it's gonna expose that negative, and anything that you have on that roll of film will be lost. That's why all of this has to take place inside of a dark changing bag or a completely dark room in your house with all of the seals taped off, okay? So you can use the tool that we talked about below, I mean, in the link below, or you can just do like me. Inside of the bag, I literally just peel it apart. So let's do that now. And then I just peel the ends off, bam. So you have your now exposed roll of film, but it'll be in the bag, so it's not exposed. All right, I like to put scissors in the bag with me. And one of the first things I like to do is I like to cut off this tab. Some people don't do that, but it makes it easier for me to spool the film with this tab off. So let's do that now. I just, while I'm in the bag, I can't see what I'm doing. I feel where the recessed, where it kind of curves and levels off. 
And then I just walk my the scissors right across that line, pop it, bam. Now I have a flat surface for uh, the film to be spooled. And then remember the two little arrows, you wanna line them up while I'm in the bag. I'm not gonna be looking and I'll just feel that both of, both of these guys are right here. Okay, and then. All right, so I'm gonna just start this on here. And you'll see how it's feeding into there catches the bearings and sometimes I'll even just pull it right over those bearings because I want it to be where it needs to be and then you just start walking that film in and see how it's going on the roll and you'll do this in the dark bag Let's get the roll going and I try to keep my thumbs over those ears to keep it from popping out okay whole roll then what you need to do is cut this with your scissors in the bag. I cut right across there and I finish rolling it in. Okay, so yep, like I was saying, I just cut straight across. Cut as close to the spool as possible. You don't lose negatives. Make sure you roll it in all the way. Now you're gonna need to put it into your tank. So in the bag, you're going to have to feel around, pull out the stem, insert it, slide it all the way to the base, and I put my first one in. And let's say we did the other roll, in the bag, did the other roll, we put that on. Super important, put this guy back on and make sure it's locked. So I feel around, I hear it click, I pull independently on this top light proof part that you pull your chemicals in and I hold onto the base. And then even when I pull my arms out, I'll get my first arm out and I will grab Ex the arm that's out of the bag externally, I'll plant it down and make sure that it's still locked down because sometimes this could pop loose. And then I'll pull my other arm out, right? Because pulling out one arm may jar it enough to dislodge it that it may allow light in. That's the last thing we want, okay? So recap, put all your stuff in the bag, film rolls, scissors, all, all of the components of the canister you're using, the spools, the stem, the cap, of course the shell, and then arms in, spool it, sit them on the spool, cap it, carefully pull your arms out, and now you're ready to pour chemicals into this. All right, let's jump back to that portion. Okay. Our chemicals are to temperature. I heard the TCS beep is at 102 degrees. That's what the manufacturer calls for. We have rolls that are dry. The first step of the development process is pouring 102 degree water on this and we're gonna let it pre-soak. Do that for two reasons. One, it washes off all of the coating on the film, uh, making the chemicals more readily available to absorb. Could be a wives' tale, I've just always done it, it works. Two, most importantly, it brings this film up to 102 degrees. So when we pour the 102 degree developer on this, we'll drain out the water and then pour the 102 degree developer on there. It doesn't reduce the temperature of the developer, right? If I pour 102 degree chemicals over 78 degree celluloid, something's got to give and that 102 is going to fall down some. And temperature and time are directly related in developing film, meaning X degrees means Y minutes. If X increases, Y does it uh, will decrease. If X decreases, the temperature decreases, Y the time increases, right? So that, that's why you can throw off and never really know why you're developing is off if you're pouring 102 degree chemicals on 78 degree celluloid. So what we're gonna do is pour that water on there. Let's do it. All right, so let's pour that water on there. I have this bottle in with the chemicals, so it's up to 102 degrees. Pouring that on top of my chemicals. So this is my f the first step in the process were my instructions, but Cinestill has an amazing card. Let me grab that. Cinestill in their uh, kit includes this really awesome little card. On this card, they outline the steps, temperatures, and times, right? So let's see, there we go. Put me back in focus, there we go. All right, so step one, optional pre-soak. Keyword is optional. I have decided to soak, and it says for one minute, what is the temperature? It should be at the temperature that the developer's at. It says no agitation, but I'm just gonna use the little 
um, agitator stick that is included with your Patterson tank. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna let this sit in here for about a minute and bring it up to temperature. So we're about to get ready to the next step. So what we're gonna do, got our developer here. We're gonna use that. I'm gonna pour out this water that's at the temperature of the developer. And then rapidly behind that, I want to be able to pour chemicals on there that are at the proper temperature, 102 degrees, right? We don't want any temperature shift. Let's check this out, but look at this. It's gonna be a crazy color. Depending on what, um, depending on what chemicals, uh, depending on what film stock you have, the color it imparts on the water that pours out will be different. It could be green, red. So don't freak out when you pour it out and you're like, why is there a color? Um, everything's okay, promise. All right, so now on our TCS, what's really cool is you can set the time for development and for blicks. And development's already preset for three and a half minutes and develop and blicks time is set for eight minutes and it'll cycle through it. Once I hit this start button over here, it's going to count down to three and a half for me, enabling me to uh, develop and not have to worry about an extra external timer. It's all built in right here. And then it's going to advance to the next cycle, which would be blicks. Now, be sure to pay attention to your blicks time because blicks times do vary. The powder I know is eight minutes. Um, no, the powder, the powder is six minutes, but this liquid is eight minutes for Blix, right? Three and a half for developing, and that's pretty standard even with the powder. But the Blix time does vary between powder and liquid. So this guy's gonna say eight minutes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get after it. I'm going to, one minute. Make sure you put a uh, rinsing agent in there, just, just water, because you want it to be at the temperature of the developer. Now, if you don't have some, some way to maintain this temperature, that's okay. When I lived in Colorado, I developed a ton of color film and I did not have a TCS. I just hand measured the water and uh, just tried to develop as fast as I could, right? Because the temperature drops, constantly measure it. Okay, so let's get going. We're gonna develop some color, let's go. So right now I'm gonna pour the developer in. All right, pouring it in. Timer's going as I'm working this. And now I'm gonna agitate. I'm gonna agitate for the first 10 seconds just with the agitation stick that comes with the tank. Okay, I'm done there. Rinse it off because I don't want any cross contamination. I'm gonna grab my top. Waterproof lid. Make sure you put that on secure because you are going to be flipping around this canister, right? And I'm going to put it right in the wash because I want it to stay at 102 degrees. And I know this water is 102 degrees, so it's going in there. Every 30, every 30 seconds, you want to invert it. I'm coming up. So here's how I invert it. I roll it and flip it. I don't take this, I don't take this hand off until the other hand has grabbed it. That way I guarantee that I don't drop it. Then I, I tap it, you see how I tapped it right there at the end? Bubbles may stick around the negatives and tapping it will release them and they'll come to the top. Um, and don't, you don't have to go crazy with agitation. Nice, slow, smooth, even movements. We're counting down now. We're about to come up on our next 30 minutes, 30 second cycle. Let's do it again. Agitate, agitate, agitate. I like to do it four times. Tap it. Good to go. All right, I'm gonna continue this and then we'll pick up where the blicks.
Okay, so we're getting down to the last 30 seconds. You wanna make sure you already have your funnel in the developer tunnel so you can pour that developer out immediately. And that's what we'll be doing. And see, I've got the little funnel in there. Coming up on our time. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. And right when that thing hits zero, zero, I'm pouring it and then I'm going to rinse the developer off with water that is at the temperature of the developer. And here we go. Okay. All right, so now my developer is going back in. Very quickly, I'm just gonna pour in water that's at the temperature of the development process. There we go, let's move this around some. All right, I'm gonna give it a quick agitation. Okay, pour that out, because it's gonna immediately want me to do some blicks here in a second. Yep, I'm supposed to have eight minutes on this blicks. So if I'm not pouring when that beeper goes off of it, I need to add that time to the end. So I just fill up my canister all the way. All right, first 10 seconds are agitation on Blix as well, developer, Blix. I'm gonna do that. Okay. All right, wanna put our light proof lid on. <laughs> Leak proof lid too, okay. All right, 15 after, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my first Agitation, four times, tap, 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 back in the water. And you definitely wanna keep the blicks submerged because developer is only develops for three minutes and 30 seconds. With blicks, that's eight minutes. If you were to keep that out of the heated water, the temperature surely over eight minutes would drop to a point that conditions would be less than ideal. All right, so we're at 15 after. That means so at 45 and 15, I rotate and I agitate. And that's what's happening. Sorry, I keep looking at the side screen. I want to make sure I'm in frame. This is a, a very tight space, guys. I know you're like, why the F does he keep looking at the screen? I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame for you guys. My head's already cut off, but that's cool. You don't need to see the stylish hair, guys. Come on. Okay, 15, we're doing it again. It's like a job. All right, I'm gonna knock this out. See you in a second. One, two, three. All right, we're in our last minute. In the last minute, you wanna make sure that you have your funnel rinsed from the previous pouring of dev into developer. Put the lid on the developer, rinse the funnel, put the funnel in the Blix bottle, and then be prepared to pour it right into that. The next step after this Blix is going to be to wash or rinse the film, and we'll do that for three minutes. Okay, this is my last agitation. All right, my last agitation. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off, rinse off this lid. Okay, I try to stay on ahead of my chores. This is gonna go off, and that means time to pour chemicals out. There we go, time to pour it in, back into the bucket. Blix will stain, so be careful. I try to get every drop out, and then I just go ahead and run water in it. Regular water. We're gonna use the good water for our final rinse, but right now it's all about just getting those chemicals off of that film. And you can run it around room temperature. So, I can turn this off. That's done. Rinse is going. See you in three minutes. Okay, so rinse is done. Pour out this water. All right. So the next step is the stabilizer. Now, the stabilizer could be your last step, but this is gonna be my second to last step. 
So what I'm going to do is just pour in the stabilizer. All right, so once the stabilizer's in there, it's pretty straightforward. We just agitate for a minute and this would be done. So, so what I'm doing right now in another room is I hang my negatives in a bathroom to dry. I have a real big problem with dust. I live in the desert, so there's a lot of loose debris. There's no moisture to keep the dirt out of the air. So I run a shower for about five minutes prior to me going in there. And what that does is catch all the dust in the air, weighs it down and puts it on the ground, right? So that's happening right now. Shower's running. Whenever I get to the stabilizer step, I turn on the shower. And okay, stabilizer's done, rinse off the stick. Okay. And then I just put funnel right back in this guy. Save your stabilizer, pour it back in. So like I said, this could be your last step, but not for me. I also have hard water problems here. So I use something, let me grab it. I use photo flow. Let's see if you can see this. There you go. Yep. Kodak photo flow. This is in the description. Um, there we go. Refocus. Okay. So this is in the description down below. And essentially what this does is it allows water to just run right off of the negative, less likely to adhere to the negative, And when it dries, leave behind any heavy contaminants, right? So when water evaporates, it leaves behind the heavy stuff and the water's like, I'm out. So if you have a lot of heavy chemicals in your water, they're going to stay on the surface of that negative once it dries. So this makes it less likely for that to occur. Also good water, right? Okay. So we did the stabilizer. Now I have, amazing distilled water here. This is like really clean stuff that we get from a shop around here. So I'm pouring this in and I'll pour a little photo flow halfway through me pouring. And some guys will like, just put a sprig in there. I give it a nice splash, a little splash of Kodak photo flow and fill that up with awesome, yummy, good water. Okay, and I'll just agitate this for about a minute. So let's talk about the next steps. This effectively is my last step for my development process. Now I'm gonna grab two clothes hangers, scotch tape, a uh, pair of scissors, and some pennies, and you'll see why. Uh, I don't use fancy clips or anything like that, so no need to worry about that. But yeah, last step. We're going to make sure the water runs right off of these negatives. And then we're going to head into the bathroom and knock that out. And then we're done guys. It's going to be awesome. Let's hope there's negatives on there. I just did this whole video pretty rushed and I may have been scatterbrained and forgot something. We're going to find out. But the whole point of this is even if, I, even if absent minded Mac can develop film and record a vlog while doing it and probably miss a couple steps or F something up and the negatives still come out, do not be scared of color film development at home. Okay guys, so in the bathroom, as you can see, the mirror is very, very foggy. All the dust should have fallen to the ground. Let's see if we've got some negatives. Success, okay? And you'll almost immediately see negatives on there, but let's pull one of these guys off. Let's take a look. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see it, but it's images. Wow, that's an amazing session. Kodak Portrait 800 is my new favorite film, guys. It's, it's really amazing. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take the film off the reel, tape it to a clothes hanger, hang it from the shower rod, and then tape some pennies to the bottom to pull it down so it hangs straight. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the camera off for this, do exactly what I just said, and I'll show you the setup. So let's do that. All right, so you'll see where I taped it to the top of the clothes hanger. What I do is I just dab the non-image area right there with a paper towel so it's dry and tape will adhere to it. And then I just grab it and you can see images all the way down, which is great. And let's get to the bottom. And let's take a look at this guy. So right here we have Basically where I just tape a stack of nickels or pennies. Guys, it worked. All right, guys. So that's it. 
we, we developed color film. We took it all the way from talking about chemicals, powder versus liquid, the light proof tank that you can pour chemicals in and out of, a Patterson tank, how to spool the, the negative onto the roll, put it back in, make sure it stays light proof, going through the process itself, dev, blix, stabilizer, uh, and then the photo flow. <clears throat> and we even talked about my high dollar uh, drying system, a clothes hanger, scotch tape, and a stack of pennies. And you'll see, I didn't do anything crazy. I wasn't overly scientific. I wasn't overly prescriptive. I adhered to the times as best I could. I try to remember to agitate every 30 seconds. Do I? No. Do I go over time sometimes? Yes. Um, and everything still comes out okay. The one area where it doesn't come out okay if you mess up, obviously if you mix dev and blix, don't do that. Always dev first. Don't pour your dev back into the blix solution. Um, but the degradation of chemicals over time. Some people want to get you know, as much value out of each purchase as possible and develop as many rolls as possible. But once you get over like 12 or 14 rolls, it, it degrades and you, you absolutely should add the 2% time. I did not on a set of rolls when I first started doing this. I developed them for three and a half minutes and they were underdeveloped and I, I shoot everything a stop over now. So, and even back then I was shooting probably a stop and a half over. And I know it wasn't because it was underexposed. It was underdeveloped because the chemicals wore out. So replenish your chemicals. Find a way to keep track of how many rolls you've uh, run through that chemical. Like I do, I just keep the labels. I think that's cool. But guys, that's it. I mean, that, it's pretty straightforward. If I wouldn't have been filming this, it would have taken so much less time. But I'm glad we've got it. Hopefully it's demystified for you. I want you guys to ask questions in the comments if you're concerned. Also, if you have a lot of experience developing color film, absolutely, please, in the comments say, Mac, cool how you did it, but also consider this, because this is gonna be one of those newer shooters, probably, or somebody just new to development. So all the information we can share with each other is gonna be super helpful, because I know there's a lot of things that I need to learn, uh, and I've learned everything the really hard way, meaning throwing away money, and I don't want you guys to have to do that. Okay, so please, absolutely, subscribe to this channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Those definitely help in the rankings and get this video the coverage uh, that it needs. People need to know how to develop color film. Stop saying black and white film, develop color film. It's beautiful, it's easy, it's simple. Don't have to make a lot of decisions. I, I do love black and white film. C41 black and white, Ilford XP2. What a beautiful film. Um, all right, what else do we have coming up? Mary and I are doing a film versus digital shoot off. We have a model, we rented an Airbnb. I don't know if you guys know, but Mary's an amazing photographer as well. She's not just my model that I drag around everywhere and my wife. She actually is an amazing photographer. Mary Mac Boudoir, link below, check out her Instagram. So she's gonna be shooting a digital Nikon D750. I will be shooting film Nikon F100 and film Nikon F5. And we're going to go head to head, same model, same uh, location, and just see what the differences are. I, I shot that D750 for a couple years for weddings. It's an amazing camera, an amazing sensor. I already know what it's going to do. Kind of scared. I'm going to shoot some high ISO stuff to make sure I've got enough leeway. It's not even fair with her 750, what she's going to be able to do. But we've got that coming. I've got the next step of this video also will be scanning these images, right? And then we need to edit the images. So scanning's coming up, you'll have that editing. So lots of good stuff. Go ahead and give us a subscribe. And, uh, oh, Instagram. Guys, you gotta follow me on Instagram, Mac Shoots Film. It's embarrassing, I have more YouTube subscribers than I do Instagram followers. And that Instagram account's pretty old, guys. Help a brother out, hit me up with a follow on Instagram. I'm rambling, I'm ready to go. See ya.